good evening everyone and welcome today on the 3rd of january the year 2022 now we've got to get used to saying 2022 so yes great evening aniket harshala uh, mihir has been you know in this group since i uh, logged in myself aniket gauri harshala sahil ashwini ayusha sandeep srishti prajwal bhargavi srishti manzi uh, wagmare sushmit samran i like your picture faisal rushikesh maitreya simon palguni natish chahat ali asghar inisha vinod arya pranali aditi yanka garima archi aryan uh, and that's it so all of you who are welcome and i'm sure many of you are joining so wish you all the best for a very very happy new year okay so have a good time enjoy yourselves and let's start with the session so i hope you had a very nice um, new year's eve and you relaxed yourself well with same energy you are back yes me good to know that so the question is for 2022 are you ready for new ideas are you ready for learning yes absolutely meher has said it what about the others unmute and say it cacophony i don't mind yes 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 good i'm very happy to hear see so many yeses so quick recap what is personality personality of a person is the dynamic organization of the psychophysical systems where within the individual that in turn determine his or her unique existence with the environment we also spoke about the fact that psychology comes from the word persona which means mask which is one of the stereotypes you know that people have uh, come across and today we're going to be talking a little more in detail about it, okay so jv watson said that personality is the sum total of all the activities that can be discovered by actual observations over a long enough period of time to give reliable information and emprin said a year before him that personality is the sum total of all the biological innate dispositions impulses tendencies appetites and instincts of the individual and the dispositions and tendencies which is repeated acquired by experience okay and according to raven cattle it is personality is that which permits the prediction of what a person will do in a given situation meaning that the more you understand a person's personality the more you know how he or she will behave in a similar situation in the future or how the person will behave right now and you are able to feel a certain sense of control though we know that uh, human beings are so unpredictable that you really don't know what they'll do next okay <laughs> but the thing is that that's what we psychologists still want to do you know we want to be able to predict them as much as possible and we want to know exactly what's going to happen in the future so i also spoke about the stalwart that is uh, sigmund freud and psychoanalysis and uh, we saw this horrendous movie which talked about uh, sex and sex and more sex i'm doing that yak because you know that whole act is uh, the word itself just spoils it okay so he was something great he talked about hypnosis free association dream analysis he was the one who gave us this beautiful knowledge about consciousness and the subconsciousness and that the programs that are embedded in it all of it with the power of what happens in our conscious and our subconscious mind we are able to really know how we are going to be able to behave and what are the results that are going to come out of it okay so with that note let us just say that he also we learned about the three you know basic other three people that are there in our system that is the child ego state or the id you know which doesn't listen to you which wants to just look after what it wants and the id wants what it wants okay and the ego which balances between the super ego which is the value system the beliefs that no no this is not the right thing to do you should go to bed early early to bed early to rise makes a man healthy wealthy and wise and i cannot say anything about this batch because they even if they sleep late whatever it is 
for their class they are on time because the class is only at 4 o'clock and not uh, early in the morning at 8:30 so we talked about this and we talked that this ego is very responsible responsible it not only understands and modifies what's happening gives and receives information but it also uses various techniques to protect the true self okay from getting hurt and this ego itself gets hurt also and this ego is not the ahankar or the pride ego but this is supposed to be the ego that is the intelligent the smart the manager the balancer between the parent ego state or the id and the super ego that is sorry the uh, the parent ego state or the super ego and the child ego state or the id and that's what takes it forward so not only projection but denial sublimation rejection repression displacement rationalization reaction formation and many others we talked about and uh, with that we started talking about the various states and uh, in the oral state also there are two when the first few years when the child is the libidinal energy the gratifying energy is supposed to be there in the mouth and then it goes to the anal area and that's where there's problem with potty training the first phase in the second phase and then the phallic stage where it goes to the genitals where you know your mother and your father become very important and uh, even if you don't realize it in india we don't really realize this because we got so many people in the family and that's what we're going to be talking about the oedipus complex and the electra complex where we start then after getting irritated and angry with uh, the parent of the opposite gender we actually become friends with them and we become like them okay and we take that forward to latency age where this this energy gets distributed completely in the body and we form buddies we learn so much we become industrious and we play and we learn how to tolerate each other and we grow up to be you know lasting friends and then of course the genital stage which is the last stage and according to sigmund freud it is the first 5 or 6 years that is until till the phallic stage that the character of a person is made the personality of a person is made but today we will see that there will be another psychologist another psychoanalyst not just a simple psychologist but according to his research and the research from jerome kagan and uh, others you know it says that the the personality of a person is formed from the womb to the tomb okay from birth till death and this gentleman also spoke about sigmund freud also spoke about the eros the life instinct and thanatos the death instinct and eros this energy is what actually keeps us going this energy is what carl gustav jung is going to be talking about the psychic energy okay so this eros that takes us to that level is what we're going to be talking about today and that is what brings in value okay now you'll notice that this gentleman carl gustav jung with a pipe in his mouth oh my god i i just love this fellow okay he is my favorite psychologist so if by any chance in the exam if someone asks you know who's ma'am's really favorite psychologist and whom does she really like a lot it is carl gustav jung because he's really gone beyond um sigmund freud and he has made it very clean for us he's saying that what he called it as the sexual energy the the libidinal energy and all that that energy is basically nothing but the psychic energy it is the mental energy it is the psychological energy it is that system the psyche of our system that drives our physical body that drives our whole life and that adds value okay he is the one who talked about the collective unconscious but let's now look at him and let's take it forward so are we ready for some new stuff today a couple of yeses quick unmute also and say yes 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 absolutely okay so see so this particular psychic energy that makes us live that gives us motivation that gives us that emotions that gives us that balance that gives us that that zing in our life that we talked about when we talked about motivation the last day of the year 
on the 31st of December. That is what gives energy to the body. And the body energy, if you're physically fit and you're physically rested and you're physically feeling great about yourself after a good exercise routine, <coughs> excuse me, that is what gives rise to the mental power. So those of us who are feeling low in our body, you're not feeling well, you've, you've just got fever of some sort and uh, you know your throat is not in order or your, you know, your body is aching or you've just been through an accident or something like that, then even if you want, it's actually a little tough to be very cheerful. Though of course, when you get flowers and naril pani and apples and a lot more other stuff, get well soon cards and a lot of roses and flowers and all that at the hospital or at home, you feel good. But once your body energy is on, then that in turn gives energy to the psychic. Okay, that is the psychic energy, the mental energy. And a person has the ability to just get up and do things. I'll just give an example, a quick one over here. That what if you have worked for more than 24 hours without sleep, okay? And you're so tired. And the, you know, the, the client was also eating up your head about some delivery of some project and all that and you know in the early the wee hours of the morning you've come home after having worked for more than 24 hours continuously not even left the office not had a wink of sleep your body is like aching and any amount of you know medicines like saradon or combi flam or any other painkiller would just not make it happen and uh, you are so thirsty when you get back home that but you're so tired Okay, everyone is sleeping and everyone is resting and it's like, you know, maybe 5 a.m. or 5.30 a.m. depending on whichever town, town you are in, whatever it is. You are so tired. There's a little finger, you know, this little finger, the little finger. You don't feel like raising it. You're so, so dog tired. I don't know why they say dog tired because dogs are all the time sleeping. Okay, so they don't work hard at all. I don't know why they say works like a dog or dog tired. No. Dogs are never tired. They're always frisky and always bouncy and always sleeping. So anyway, so you have that, you know, energy that is you're so tired and you don't even feel like getting up to have a glass of water and your eyes are just drifting and you're just about to get into that deep hypnotic state of sleep on the couch, the recliner couch in your home and suddenly your sister comes running and says, Bhai or, you know, Didi, uh, daddy is going through a heart attack. Come inside and call the doctor. Do something. What will happen? What will happen? Come on, unmute and tell me. What will happen? What will happen to you? Hmm. Response. What will happen? You jump up. Yes, Harshala. I like that. You just jump up. You'll jump into the situation and you'll do something about it. What about the others? We'll keep sleeping. Hmm? Don't care about daddy. You do care, huh? So at least one of you unmute and say, ma'am, we'll do the same. Reflex action, okay? So yes, lots of energy will come and you'll forget that you've not slept for so many days. And until and unless you get the news from your uh, the hospital that your dad is fine, you will not be able to even sit, okay? And you'll not be able to do anything about it. You will drive down to the hospital and you'll take full action because there's no one else who can drive other than your dad and you, and you'll take that. So that psychic energy, which goes beyond the physical energy. You know, when commandos are trained, I've talked about it before, they barely get to sleep. They're constantly alert, constantly at it, okay? And yes, there is a lot of stress that comes with it. But the fact is that that is what adds value to your beingness. And that psychic energy is what Carl Gustav Jung called as a value that adds to your system. Where, you know, that, 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 that big time energy that you have, the fact that you're still listening to me, if you are at all, okay, <laughs> that's what is the dependence on this okay 
So he is the one who also spoke about the collective unconscious. So let's look at what is this collective unconscious. You have the ego, the ego that is, you know, balancer, the mediator, the one which modifies, understands, and everything, and the one which is taking care of what is happening within you, vis-a-vis -vis what is happening outside you, what you should do, the rules and regulations, and what your parents expect you to do, your teachers and other parent-like figures expect you to do, vis-a-vis -vis what you really want to do. So that ego is actually always fighting on the ground. There is what is called a fight, a dwand, a struggle in your system of the left brain, right brain, of what you really want, your creative, inhibited self, and the one which says, no, 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 this is not the right thing to do, this is the wrong thing to do. And above that, a little above that is your personal unconscious, okay? And a lot above that is the collective unconscious. So to make you understand about collective unconscious, I'll give you another example. A simple example is your computer, okay? So your computer is supposed to be the personal unconscious or the consciousness, okay? The entire consciousness is made up of, say, maybe this laptop, this particular phone in your hand. What does it have? It has got a huge memory. It has got certain programs. It has got lots and lots of programs that are running so many processes within your computer. It has got applications which are also based on programs. And it has a storehouse of memory. It has a storehouse of embedded programs, temporary programs that you don't even know they exist. It also has viruses sometimes inside the program that help or don't help the, your system, okay? So what happens is that there are so many files and so many programs, you don't even know they exist. Even those with the knowledge of computer, there are so many over here who've done your bachelor's in uh, computer application. You all don't know exactly how the programs work within a simple PC. So that's what you are. But the moment you are connected to the Wi-Fi, and then you open any search engine or you're connected to Zoom and you know any other method. And what happens is that there can be some download of information from somewhere else or someone else, which the material they have created can come into your system. You can just type some specific words and you'll have options coming in and you choose to go and read and be connected to that particular person via Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or any other method, WhatsApp or everything. And that's how your system works. And that's how the collective unconscious is, okay? So another example of collective unconscious is, I'm gonna tell you this through a story. This is a story of a village which had gone through a very severe drought and not only since this particular one year where, but it had been more than two years when they had gone through it. And this was the third year. And without the water, they would be starving. All the grains and all the stuff that they had saved over a period of time had all got expended. And now they really needed the rains badly to take care of their own sustenance, okay? So what happens is that through media, etc., they call some stalwarts, some nice, uh, you know, the religious leaders or the religious heads from all the sectors of the society. They don't want to just trust in one god in uh, the Hinduism because Hinduism has got so many gods. So they call a lot of Hindu leaders. They call uh, uh, the other religions also. All of them, they come together and they all come to the con consensus that if we were to collectively, you know, come near a temple or this whole area, which is a common area, and we all put our hands together in various formats and we pray for rain, rain will come, okay? And yet there are only, you know, kind of 10% you know, of the village and the nearby village who have faith that the rain will come. They're looking at the sky and they can clearly see there's no clouds, there's no ganana ganana girbar, you know, and that clouds are going to come and rain is going to come, nothing is happening. So, and yet there is this one little boy who is coming with an umbrella and the mother is saying, what are you doing with an umbrella? 
this is you're going for this prayer meeting i know that after the prayer meeting is over we are going to get rain so that is faith okay so the collective consciousness or the collective unconsciousness when it gets together okay those form what is called the rules of uh, society which we are conscious of but the collective unconscious are those unwritten rules some unwritten or written superstitions okay and your effect from the others just comes to you the effect of the the environment comes to you if there's a lot of celebration happening say maybe in your society and you're despondent and you don't feel like going there you don't want to attend you don't want to you know pay the 300 rupees and attend the victoria garden party that happened yesterday then what do you do you just sit and you crib okay but when the music starts when the blast starts when you start hearing sounds of people having fun you're tempted you go to your balcony you look down and you say oh wow this is so much fun so even if you wanted to be angry and despondent because of some reason you quit that and you go down and have a lot of fun and my neighbors are you listening to me i'm talking about yesterday's example not mine but many others who came there and i overheard some people think this is the first time in 7 years i have come down i didn't even know what the podium looked like before this i not even visited the podium alone okay so have you understood the power of the collective unconscious this is where this whole thing of your psychic energy and your friend psychic energy the family psychic energy the kutum parivar you know the family the institution and the gathering the public gathering when people gather together to bless a couple who's getting married or to give blessings to a person who has lost someone loving in their family that's why people come together so that they can collectively give some psychic energy to the person who is celebrating or a pers person who is in grief are you getting it so that's how it works and how else does a collective unconscious work is that sometimes you're going in a bus and you climb that bus and for some reason you suddenly start feeling you know that there are a lot of irritated people around you or you just start feeling irritated for no reason at all okay and you look and you'll find that people are frowning and all that and at other times it happens the other way around you enter a bus you know public bus and suddenly you feel a renewed sense of hope and you know you want to just stay there you don't want to get down at your stop because the people are so radiantly happy for no reason at all and they are kind of you know unconsciously rubbing that energy and transferring that ease and love because we transfer disease that's what we know about corona and the others but here you also transfer a lot of joy when you just you know like a you are like a fountain of joy and you expand and it goes out of your system that's what the collective unconscious is and that's what carl gustav gustav jung brought about we of course as indians uh, knew about it in our scriptures but when carl gustav jung puts it properly then people like romita who are more of the angrezi style you know they learn and they realize that he had taken stuff from basically the normal scriptures and what have you and he was connected to and the eastern and the far eastern cultures to a very large extent india being one of them he was also the one who talked about these three principles and the second one that is the principle of equivalence is from the first law of thermodynamics which says energy can neither be created nor can it be destroyed it can only be converted so if you're feeling a sense of anger if you're feeling a sense of you know passion when you want to do something or you want to destroy something instead of destroying something use and channelize that same sublimate it okay or displace it in the proper direction so sublimation is where you just do something else and you just let that energy sublimate okay you just want to forget it forget it forget it i'm feeling a lot of passion for this particular girl but let me just you know go take a good swim and you know let me have a cold shower and sublimate that energy instead you could displace it you know your boss is angry with you or you are angry with your boss you instead of coming back and screaming at your mother at home because you're not married okay and she cannot scream at uh, anyone because uh, you know she doesn't have a dog or a child and you are the child she can't say anything to you instead of doing that what do you do you just take that energy harness it okay 
convert that energy into and realize that you are angry only because you love the person only because you expected something more and you didn't get it so what do you do you don't stop expecting but you change your expectations you become aware of it and then you harness harness this anger and you write a love letter to that person and say you know what you are a wonderful person but you did not live up to my expectations for this for that i take responsibility and in the future i do expect this 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 otherwise it was nice knowing you and i do love you a lot and you see the kind of response you get so that is the principle of equivalence the first principle of opposites is what i have learned in art of living that opposite values are complementary okay so what do you mean by opposite values are complementary that this person is being nice to you today tomorrow this person can be nasty also okay so your mother will give you she give you food but if you don't listen to her about something if you don't do her work properly she will give you a thup also okay so <laughs> okay opposite values are complementary and it means that if there is too much darkness right now if there is despondency grief right now if your boss is frustrated right now tomorrow he will be rejuvenated and he or she will be happy also okay so if it is you know like uh, the day time is very fun the night time is there for relaxation okay and if the night time is not you are not getting enough relaxation the morning means that there is another day and today you can use that day in another form okay and then comes the principle of entropy which is basically the balancer okay the principle of entropy works on the homeostatic balance and it is very similar to what i just spoke about that when you go into a bus and you find that you know someone is maybe around you sitting next to you and you suddenly feel you know like a, a surge of happiness you just feel like laughing maybe that person is bursting out of positive energy so you notice that sometimes you see certain teachers you see certain members of your family you see certain godhead people or you know like people like um, say for example anyone who has come from a happy occasion or who's just got married or, or happily married okay or who's just got a job and is full of energy enthusiasm you meet that person you feel enthusiastic also so whenever you see in maharashtra you see ganpati's murti you look at it and you say jai ganesh jai ganesh jai ganesh deva and no no it's the other way around um, the other one that is darshan mate man kamana purti jai dev jai dev jai mangal murti okay so you can all of you say ganpati bappa more yeah, whoever likes it okay so coming back to this this principle of entropy you take a bowl of simple plain water okay and you put in a jelly like substance like a a paste you know maybe a curry paste or a jelly like substance and you just put it in and without shaking it come back after a few hours and you find that the entire liquid is has got the same texture same density and it all why because there was no membrane and there was nothing protecting this from that okay so when you get immersed in your environment whatever be your energy you if you are high in energy you let go of it you give it to the people around or if you are low in energy and you go in a high energy zone you then take in energy so there is a transfer like this okay the heat and the cold the density you know less and more so that homeostatic balance between people also gets established with the third principle of entropy so the first is of opposites then equivalence and then entropy and opposites means opposite values are complementary you know you can get good and bad everything from an organization when you have good teachers like ramita ma'am you enjoy yourself but the same ramita ma'am takes an exam that's when you say oh my god i didn't know she's going to take an exam also i thought she's just a goody goody teacher who will talk about personality development and be done with it but here she's going to give us marks okay so that is the principle of opposites so whatever there is even a, a sikka that is a coin is of no use unless you know if both the sides are the same they both are very good 
then that that particular point is not going to work in the market it has no value so for the value to come in every good thing like coffee has its advantage coffee has its disadvantage also okay and then the equivalence is where you know the energy never gets destroyed okay it's never lost it is only converted so therefore you can it cannot be created or it cannot be destroyed so the energy is within you you just take out the psychic energy and you feel the energy and if you want you can draw energy you know from the plants from the people from happy thoughts they are all there within you the moment you feel a little happy thought something that excited you in the past something you know that made you feel safe when you regressed into the arms of your mom that's where you feel good so that is equivalence and entropy which we just talked about balancing okay so more about it is uh, as we go you know learn more about it <coughs> carl gustav jung was also the one who talked about the archetypes archetypes is supposed to be you know that um, um, at a very um, what can i say collective and conscious level we start associating certain values to certain positions certain ways of being and i give you the example which is right here that is the mother archetype okay so the mother if you always consider to be the very loving the very nurturing and the very caring that does not mean that there are certain mothers who actually don't care about their children who actually left their children in an orphanage or who have neglected their children okay so they can be but when the moment we talk about the word mother the archetype of mother the image of you know the mother in a simple sari the mother in a nice shawl you know holding the baby close to the heart like the picture over here of mother mary with with uh, lord jesus you know so close to her or the yashoda mother or you know you have so many mother like figures in this universe even our shivaji maharaj's mother we really consider jijabai to be one of the most you know important mother archi uh, archetype the stereotype you know so that's how it becomes okay so it's not really just the stereotype it's also the archetype archetype is slightly different from stereotyping but it's kind of there's a thin line between the archetype and the stereotype okay so there is a boss archetype there is a subordinate archetype which is working on theory x principle that sometimes we feel that the subordinates are not there to work for us and yet if you they have to prove themselves by being of theory y that is those who are innately disposed towards working hard okay and there are many other archetypes like that of the magician the archetype of that being a clown there will always be some clown in the office okay there will always be someone who will be making you laugh okay someone who is not serious about work and you like such type of people around having them around you know it just lightens up the atmosphere but then you take the archetype of people who are the mother type and you can clearly remember the case of sonu sood you know how he went out of the way to help the people around because he wanted he was you know in spite of being the masculine the one with all the uh, he is the protector okay he is the father figure who wanted to be there for the rest of the world when they were wanting to go back home because he felt that he was lucky to have his own home and his parents with him at that time okay so persona as i talked to you about this whole thing that it becomes like an archetype you know you you put on a, a mask okay to show something about yourself to project something to the world and then if that mask becomes too too sticky and you're not able to remove it and be yourself whenever possible then that is also called emotional labor remember we talked about emotional labor when you act too much and there is deep level acting the stress becomes too much okay and then there can be a burst where you just want to remove everything and get out and that is the reason why there are some people whose tolerance level you know abroad there has been a lot of delinquent cases where you find that there will be certain people who just you know leave their car leave their house give away the money the the guy who wrote monk who sold, sold his ferrari robin sharma he actually did it when he's talking about that character is actually talking about himself okay in monk who sold his ferrari 
he was going through that frustration and he wanted to get out of it completely okay so now let's take it further to this that is anima and animus and you've already seen this picture when I was talking about the left brain and the right brain. So when we talk about the anima and animus, what does it mean? The anima means supposed to be uh, personified as a little girl, okay? And the animus is supposed to be pers personified as a wise old man, as a sorcerer, as a person who, with a lot of, you know, knowledge. And the anima, the little girl, the young pretty girl has come out from, you know, the chest or the liver of this particular wise old man when uh, it dates down to the story of how uh, God created Adam, the first human being. And after some time when Adam got bored with the whole thing, you know, the, God created Eve. And they say that God created Eve from uh, the rib of, you know, Adam. So basically from the heart is where the woman comes out the pretty girl so this personified old man or the sorcerer the learned man is often termed as males and this is where the mcp part of carl gustav Jung comes in you know where he thinks that men are very smart and women are not but then putting these two together that is the pretty young damsel in distress and the strong old wise man that energy when it comes together it becomes synergy what he referred to as sai sai g okay so it is not just sai sai g it is actually the this word sai sai g is coming from synergy okay and when that synergy happens that's when a new life is born a new idea is born a new enterprise is born okay and uh, don't get too caught up in the details of, you know, a witch and Mother Earth and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Okay, fine, that is there. The, the strong <coughs> feminine force, okay? But he's also the one who talked about introversion and extroversion. And here, he's talking about introversion being not socially introvert or socially extrovert, okay? The socially introvert person is shy, unassuming, uh, and is scared of the environment. But the introvert people that Carl Gustav Jung is talking about are people who are basically, you know, they are very comfortable with their own thoughts, by their own feelings, their own fantasies, their dreams. And they are very comfortable about what they want and they know what they want, okay? These people may be socially big time extroverts. They may be salesmen, but actually they are introverts. And the ones who are extroverts are considered to be sometimes, yes, Mihir. They, they are very comfortable with their own space, with their own title. They don't want any entitlement. Okay, remember uh, self-efficacy theory we talked about in motivation yesterday? The people with high sense of self, self-efficacy, self-confidence, emotional intelligence again, those with who are highly motivated are highly confident also. Okay, they have that achievement drive. And who has the achievement drive? A person who's got who's got confidence. Somebody who doesn't have confidence or who's not introverted, doesn't know what he or she is, will not be comfortable with the external world. So yesterday I was having a nice conversation with a new uh, new person. Actually, she's been here in the building since three more than three years. But I just uh, met her for the first time yesterday. And we talked about this. And I told her that I was a person who was a very introvert person. Okay, So I wanted to ask you this question, but I didn't take the risk because this morning after explaining everything, also somebody said that I was extrovert. So I may look socially extrovert, but I'm not. Okay. So here I will just tell you one thing that here uh, introversion is also got to do with what is called the internal locus of control. And tomorrow we will be talking about locus of control. Okay. So I'm typing it out over here. Locus of control. Okay. So those with an internal locus of control are the ones who take responsibility if someone else comes and shouts at them or someone else botches up, you know, the whole thing 
uh, they just uh, you know take responsibility and they say that i should have you know been more aware of what's happening in that person's mind and not allowed him or her to come and yell and uh, you know these people don't say that this person is insane he should not be getting angry rana anand should not be getting angry okay they are willing to find out what is troubling rana rana was a success in delhi okay but then why he is failing in santa cruz airport which is right now chatrapati shivaji terminus okay uh, uh, sorry airport are you getting it international airport so this is what they ask and uh, any questions on this i'll take a pause because after this is eric erickson so till now has how many of you have felt feel that we've got a grip on who this carl gustav jung is and why ma'am likes him so much you got a grip on him are you comfortable with him good harshala anyone else who feels that they are comfortable with this and they've understood about introversion and extroversion i like to add that mbti that is mears brick type indicator tomorrow we will be talking about that too um is something that uh, their introversion and extroversion measuring that is this introversion extro extroversion that carl gustav jung has spoken about but the big five model when they are talking about introverted personality and extroverted personality they are talking about the socially introverted and the socially in extroverted person okay so what do you think i am socially extroverted or socially introverted see it's up to you me here what you want to be okay you want to be an introvert person that just means you have an internal locus of control that means you take responsibility so yes if you ask me for an opinion okay which is my personal opinion as romita ma'am okay as a person not as a psychologist not as a teacher i would say it's good to be introverted that is this introversion okay but socially if you are extroverted or you are introverted again the choice is yours remember that depends on what kind of a uh, persona you want to exhibit what kind of personality you want to be carrying about what kind of a job you want to be getting into okay if you want to get into a sales job and you are basically socially and uh, introverted person it won't work if you want to get into uh, a sales job and you are an in, an extrovert according to carl gustav jung then you will not succeed you got to be socially an extrovert but you got to be actually an introvert so that you can look inward and see you know um mana put it put it out there you don't have to send me a dm on it okay put it out there take responsibility this is these are all your classmates okay introverted as of those people who are inward looking you know they are aware of what's going on in their system but i told you socially extroverted okay i'll tell you what socially introverted people also have plenty of jobs written out for them there are many jobs that socially extroverted people are not given for example the job of a librarian okay a person who is extroverted will never make a good librarian because they are so chatty they want to chat 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 but librarian needs to be and zipped up and just you know doing their work putting books and just knowing okay so how do you become um, manav is it okay if i give you our example i mean i read it out to everyone okay thank you for the permission in top positions also uh, meer i'll tell you one thing i can give the example of again yuvraj shivasthav he was a totally introverted person when i met him in the first year of uh, the university by the time he reached the third year he became quite an extroverted person and we realized that he had very clearly told us that when he come from balia he wasn't doing very well okay and uh, though age wise he never failed and everything because his parents had also put him into a school at a very early age today after so many years you know he is a ceo of make my trip okay 
or at least he is in a CXO position. From what I read, is that he is also the head of the national HR uh, that whatever NHRD. Okay, NHRD. Uh, he's the he's the chairman of it. Okay, and he is the CEO of. Uh, I'm not in done my research on it, but I, I've been told in my group amongst my friends that he is the one. Okay, and at one time I couldn't believe it. Anurag Agnihotri, another friend of mine, a male, again, psychology department, very shy. You just could not get him to say hi because he would, you know, he would, he literally had a lisp and he had a problem. And we'll be talking about that in the next to next theory. Okay. So have you understood that it is absolutely wonderful in my opinion, which I may be wrong also for a person to be an introvert according to Carl Gustav Jung. There is a person with an internal locus of control where the person takes responsibility for everything that is happening, even outside does not go blaming people and does not, you know, uh, go criticizing other people unnecessarily. And the person who is extrovert socially is a person who is very friendly and is able to talk, who has a nice introverted basic personality. Okay, An extroverted person Okay, could be a person who is not very sure of what's happening in their personal life. They want something, but they're always looking up to somebody else, another archetype in their life for some sort of, um, what can I say that, um, what's the word? Um, there's an English word to it, I'm forgetting. I mean, where you need to be told again and again, Come on, guys, somebody good in English or Hindi. Uh, I mean, in English, tell me uh, where you need, uh, where you know you you go and seek approval. What's it called? See, I'm, it's just going through my, away from my mind. Not permission is not really the right word. You need, it's right at the tip of my tongue. Okay, it'll come. Yes, okay, so I'm going to let me take it forward because I need to give you all a break also in 15 minutes. And I can only do it once I have finished with psychoanalysis of Eric Erickson, also in Alfred Adler. So there are two more theories before you get a little break. Okay. So let's look at the psychosocial stages of development and the critical periods according to Eric Erickson and Corrid Lawrence. Okay. And uh, Jerome Kagan, who talked about uh, resilience amongst children. So this guy said, Eric Erickson, again, uh, Neo Freudian. Okay, from Danish uh, background, he said that it's not just the psychosexual stages of development, it's got nothing to do with all that, the opposite gender and all that nonsense, according to him. He said it is the psychosocial stages of development where parents do play a very important part, but the development of the person does not just stop after six to eight years. As a person, as an individual grows with the kind of extraneous circumstances and the internal body changes and the mental changes and the experiences based on the perception of the person. That person keeps on developing till the last breath. And the personality of a person is ultimately the dynamic, ever-changing organization of the psycho and physical systems within an individual that determine his or her unique adjustment with the environment okay so let's look quickly at his stages and what he said he said that every child who's born on this earth goes through a very unique phase of development the way you come out your own twin your identical twin in spite of having the same environment will be slightly different and every individual goes through their personal crisis personal dwandhya here, everywhere, okay? They have their personal fight, okay? They have their personal fight where they just uh, kind of, you know, um, They have their own crisis through which they must struggle. And then they must emerge winners or 
whatever you know the opposite of winners i'm not i don't like to use that word with l okay and they then develop a healthy personality where they are able to cope with the internal changes the internal you know um, devil inside them or the internal voice and you know the external circumstances or the voices of the people around them and this happens throughout the life span what is the opposite of the word devil quickly type it out write it down no the opposite of the word itself devil devil is a bad man okay d e v i l so l i v e d yes lived so devil is an evil e v i l is evil which is the opposite of the word live can you see that so if you want to live the opposite value to it that karl gustav jung spoke about is evil okay <laughs> so are you getting it so the can you see how beautiful these um these certain people are who have come up with this whole psychoanalysis bit and how they have explained personality yes so the word devil the opposite is lived l i v e d okay so a person who's not lived enough becomes a devil or a, even a devil is actually he's lived his life you know in the opposite way and has become and lived okay are you getting it so this is what he talked about and now let's see the next slide is my favorite slide those of you with a very clean background without this annotation over here whoever is created the anonymous person has created the annotation please remove the annotation i'll be very happy if you could if you don't we will just stop during the break and the annotation will go away okay till then we have to be with the annotation thanks to your uh, what should i say uh, the naughty evil mind you know who's troubling a nice teacher like romita ma'am right so let's look at this particular one so the next slide actually tells us a little more in detail in the first four aspects and then we'll go back to the previous slide for the more so according to him from the time a child is born till the time the child is of 2 years the child goes through a psychosocial crisis which is trust versus mistrust okay okay anonymous please change your name okay please have your name over there because then uh, you know it will be very difficult for us to mark you present so even if you are someone who is not part of uh, wadia college and is attending my college i have no issues please go right ahead but don't use any stupid name just use a simple name like you know john smith and you will not be john smith okay so just or john doe or whatever you know so just keep your name whatever be your name put your name i'll really be very appreciative so change your name and then respond and i'm very glad you're taking responsibility and putting your name forward i i really appreciate you mr anonymous okay but give your name i'll be very grateful so the first two years when the child has to go through breastfeeding and the child is into just feeding defecating etc i mean like you know where the child is not into potty training the first two years is the child when the child is in the oral stage that's when the child learns to develop trust or to you know start mistrusting the universe and those three things you know the character the competence and the confidence of a person is made in the first two years according to professor suresh vishwanath in his paper okay and according to eric erickson in this particular theory so the significant relationship in the person's life is the mother and this is the time when the individual when the individual learns to receive and to give back okay so the child receives care the child receives the food the sustenance the child receives the massage and the child gives back hope and faith to the parents and that is also a psycho social virtue that they just kind of you know gain within themselves okay so therefore this is the first phase so the child gives back a lot of 
happiness to the people around that bundle of joy when held in the arm you know you forget your worries and when the child laughs for no reason at all and it just giggles remember the that one which i showed about creativity about this guy just laughing that mm, and the child starts laughing tung and the child starts laughing so that particular laughter the love comes from the child in these two years okay when the child is between 2 and 3 years old and going through what is called the anal stage that is when the child starts developing autonomy that is you know they are able to take care of their own defecation or they develop shame and doubt this is where the you know body shaming where i am not fair enough i am too fair i am fat i am thin i am skinny i am weak and you know i am not good enough i can't do it on my own where the parents make the child feel bad also okay and parents are the significant relationships they learn to hold on to or to let go so these are the people in the second stage the ones who become constipated and all that these are the people who hold on to the past memories to the way you know their parents scolded them when they were 4 years old that they were left for one day the father came to pick the child forgot to pick the child up from school this child is so dumb could not go inside to the teachers and or tell the teachers you know it seems that my parents have forgotten to pick me up can you please drop me home instead they you know use it as a stone and they keep hitting the mother and the father and the father and mother keep hitting each other you could have gone and picked up the child you could have gone oh, come on yaar let it go so there's that you know song from khamoshi the new khamoshi i mean the second khamoshi or whatever where it says no jaane 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 do okay let it go there are certain things you got to let go only then you will be comfortable and you would have developed a will power that will the will which is not just willingness but the will power to control your emotions and that's when people when they say that you know anger is bad control your emotions you have to learn this is the only place in my life where i use the word should have must okay you as a person to build up a strong character strong personality you have to have the will the determination the initiative and that happens at this stage when you're just a little baby toddler okay when you're learning how to do potty and so too so that's when you learn okay so this is the time in your life okay so when that is taken care of sweetheart but you can develop your will power and if you can develop your will power you can be able to you know handle a lot of uh, issues that may actually trouble you instead of opening your mouth here you do it at home or you do it when you are quiet or you open your mouth in public and you stand strong with your game okay so you you'll have to punam you'll have to be a little more specific about what you're talking about and what you're going through and then i'll be able to help you but generically this is the phase of autonomy where a person feels a sense of independence when a first person feels that i can do it i have it in me i can and removes the t of the can't okay and they can if they think they can or they are always shameful about what they are and they don't like you know bring out their talents they don't expose their talent and the word talent has a word latent in it they just hide behind not just i'm not talking about clothes i am one of those people who likes to be completely covered i don't like to you know kind of wear those sleeveless and all that kind of you know clothes there's been only one sleeveless top that i've had all my life and i wore it once or twice or thrice maybe okay and uh, i was uh, going through a very confident phase of my life that's when i wore after that she no 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 i can still go back to covering myself then comes the third phase that is the 3 to 6 years old which is called the phallic stage according to sigmund freud in this what happens is that not just the parents according to sigmund freud but according to eric erikson it is the family 
okay this is the time when the children go out and they play okay the psycho psychosocial activities what happens is that they start getting into preschool they meet other children they meet other people okay and that's when they uh, develop this initiative versus guilt this is the time when the children are told you know now sing the song twinkle twinkle tell baba black sheep to uncle na okay show them how to dance na okay now don't force your children at this stage too much but if they feel like sharing something let them do it publicly because when they do it in front of their relatives inside the house they gain the confidence to go out there in the school or the institution where they are studying in and be you know extroverted socially okay and this is the time when children develop a purpose and a sense of courage okay and then there is this phase which is the latent state according to sigmund freud is a 7 to 12 years where the children you know learn the neighborhood and the school are the two important significant relationship and the people in the neighbor the neighbors and the school friends and the teachers make a lot of difference to these people okay at this time if the friend is drinking milk and that friend is drinking holics in the milk now i don't want milo i want holics i don't want boost i want holics because my friend is drinking so children get influenced and this is the time when you should be as parents exposing them to a lot of games this is the time you let them play out there get their hands dirty in terms of badminton football um swimming this is the time when you teach the children swimming actually even before this you know in the initiative versus guilt phase even at that time okay you just make them go out there and uh, learn how to swim give them Uh, like nice uh, crossword and jigsaw puzzles this is the time when the children start learning how to search for words you have like you know uh, uh, i'm looking here because i keep these puzzles uh, the books and all that so if there is anything in between i get some time instead and i don't have enough time to read a chapter or read a book or something which is always around okay i pick up these uh, books and i start solving the puzzles in there join the dots coloring okay and uh, jigsaw puzzles okay this is also the phase when the children tend to become slightly uh, um destructive okay they want to destroy things remember in three idiots this guy goes uh, ranchor he goes and everywhere is with a screw driver he opens up the refrigerator he opens up a pen he opens up everything and the children are very curious they want to find out how does this work now they'll open this up okay and they'll completely disengage the pen they will remove this and they will play with the spring as to how the spring is working okay then they don't know how to put it back okay they'll just leave it there and then the father will come and he'll scream and he'll say what did you do and they'll just put things together and then the spring and this thing goes for a toss and the next time the father wants to use the pen the pen is not fully functional okay he's not able to put it back together so this is the time where you actually see i put it ulta also even i didn't put it properly okay so this is the time where you bring uh, jigsaw puzzles you get lego puzzles you get games like scrabble you get uh, even card games and if they are the destructive type they will try to tear the cards and they'll show their attitude you get plastic ones which will not get torn okay however much they try to twist it, it nothing will happen to it and if there are some things that gets spoiled also okay let it be now see i have only destroyed this pen can you see this so this is what happens at this stage okay let them let them get hurt let them climb trees let them play in the mud now there will be parents of this age who say madam aapke time pe tha pollution nahi tha aajkal jo ye ye hai wo are bhai the children are also they are more exposed to uh, these gamma rays from the television and the phone you know than they are to let them be the earth is the same okay and however much it is it is still the same and we also didn't even know what the what the difference between some rocks and some dried potty of another dog would be and we would still play with it okay 
so yeah you could do you ganda okay so he was also the one okay before i get to this let me get to the other stages okay so the stage from 12 to 18 which is supposed to be the genital stage the puberty stage this is the time when children and people you know individuals learn what is this ego identity okay this is the time when they realize that they have it in them to be able to resolve the conflicts by now the parents are already married for more than 17 to 18 years with each other and the kids are about you know in that age where they are in this teenage age. now the parents have you know like abhi bada ho gaya hai ab iske samne kya chupana okay i don't like you i don't like you or whatever is happening you know so this is the time where there is a lot of confusion that is going on because for certain things the child has grown up jao ja ke chai banao okay jao ja ke ye ye kar ke aao wo kar ke aao but at the same time you are too small to take decisions regarding money you are too small to go out late at night you are too small to drive okay you are big enough to do uh, shopping for us but you are not strong enough and big enough to have a credit card in your own name some parents you are not big enough to have a smartphone of your own but you are big enough ki hamara smartphone abhi dekho kya ho gaya hamare messenger ko theek karo ye kya ho gaya ye facebook mein kya ho gaya kisi ne hack kiya kya mere no you you expect your child to look after that but then this is where the role confusion happens and this is where all these things happen and the important people are again the peer group and the role models and the role models can be parents remember some of you have had role models even at this stage when you've grown gone into the next phase that is the young adult but this is the time when you start having some lasting friends even with the members of the opposite gender okay this is the time with the loyalty and that ye dosti hum nahi chhodenge happens at this stage it starts at this stage okay and most of the time the friends that are ye dosti hum nahi chhodenge chhodenge gam magar tera saath na chhodenge no not gam the dam magar whatever you know that we we'll leave the body but we will not leave your friendship okay so that happens at this stage okay where the fidelity with the loyalty fidelity not fidelity fidelity okay to be oneself and to share oneself that is the learning that they have okay to be oneself and still to be an introverted person and yet be an extroverted person socially this is that stage of introversion and extroversion where children either become very extroverted socially or they become extroverted you know according to sigmund freud that they are just so you know not Com comfortable, and then at your stage, what you are right now, is where the intimacy versus isolation comes in. This is the stage when, after some time, after a few years, depending on your job and etc., you find partners, you find girlfriends or boyfriends forever. You marry that person, okay, and you become even closer to your friends and your partners in work. and that's where you learn this beautiful value called love you understand the importance of love where in your early 30s late 20s and early 30s you even give birth you synergize with your partner and you give birth to a new baby you give birth to a new enterprise you give birth to a new team okay you get promoted okay you get into what is called your esteem needs also you fulfill your kinetic and uh, your cognitive and also your aesthetic needs okay so this is where you learn and the social psychosocial crisis is between intimacy and isolation and you learn this beautiful value for love and the love is what makes the whole world round okay and gives you that friendship and the next stage when you are from your 30s to your 50s year i think it's a little uh, late uh, i mean wrong not printed very well but this is like you know or maybe it's printed correct but uh, from the 30s to the 50s that's where you learn responsibility where your children have become teenagers when you have now got cxo positions in your job or your own business and your entrepreneur you know your ship is doing very well your enterprise is doing very well okay 
so this is where the family again the household and the workmates come into thing and here you are either very generative very creative where you are very growth oriented or you become self obsessed self absorbed you become an alcoholic you become an addict and you start deteriorating and hurting the people around you and this is the time where you learn how to take care of people okay this is the time where that you know the tendency within you becomes so easy you know to be there for the others where you are responsible you are the head of the family even after you have your parents who are at the stage beyond that that is 50s and beyond when you become grandparents nowadays people become grandparents only after the age of 60 or 65 or something like that because they've got married late and their children have got married late but this is a time you integrate all your experiences come together in your heart and you feel very you know you you have acquired that wisdom you acquired that experience where you want to give back to the universe you become a consultant you become a senior consultant you become a senior trainer you become a senior counselor you become a senior coach and that's what you do and your purview is not just your family now it's mankind or my kind so either you live in despair and you are like oh, mere bachche mujhe sambhal nahi rahe <laughs> maine apna retirement ka ppf ka sab usko de diya le kar ke biwi ke saath jo na videsh chale gaye they don't want to adjust with me <laughs> you know and they kho mujhe par pa diya my children should look after me my husband is dead usko sambhalna chahiye मैंने उसको अपने पेट में पैदा पाला नौ महीने के लिए अरे दैट वाज वेरी इन इन 1955 इन योर बचपन व्हेन यू वर 15 इयर्स ओल्ड व्हेन यू हैड योर किड नाउ ग्रो अप ओके सो आई एम नॉट डिसरिस्पेक्टिंग द एल्डर्स आई एम जस्ट सेइंग दैट देयर कैन बी सम पीपल हु आर यू नो लाइक हमको अपने गांव में रहना है अपने लोगों के साथ रहना है like a very close friend of mine his mother has fallen down and she stays in uh, odisha in a village they've got a nice house over there and everything now this fellow and his brother and the sister all are in pune all are here all are married here all are working even the women are working anything happens to the parents one of them has to sacrifice and you know go there and then the fight happens between the siblings tum jao tumhari maa bhi hai ye are tum jao tum bade ho tumhari responsibility hai are main kya karu amma manti nahi hai you know that kind of things happen so that is integrity versus despair when sometimes something happens to all three of them and they're not able to be there and that's when the parents make you feel bad or the other way around where they are full of wisdom they say please carry on and we'll join you we'll probably sell this whole property for lots of money now and i'll make sure that you buy houses wherever you want in your choice of town and we'll keep one for ourselves also so that if we are bored of the three of you we got a place to call our own we don't put it on rent and all that and the remaining money and everything our pension for everything it goes in a safe keeping where we are able to take care of ourselves also and we'll be consultants to and we'll come in as uh, like you know teachers to wadia college and we'll talk to romita ma'am and we will also come and meet the students here and we'll take it further so have you got it so this is what he talked about and the critical periods where the people are in that little confusion as to what should i do trust versus mistrust okay are you getting it so this was by corred lawrence and he got the nobel prize for it in 1935 and the resilience that children have oh my god when children are small and when they are not molly coddled when they are not spoiled brats then you leave them to their resources they are so industrious they will use the clay of the actual mud and they'll create houses from sand and from mud and they get used to these small small insects and lizards and scorpions and snakes and all that unlike the thoroughbreds of uh, you know city bred kids who are scared of everything okay 
So let's bring ourselves up with a lot more power and a lot more happening and get over your fears. And let's go to the next one before I give you a short break. That is psychoanalysis by Alfred Adler. Now he said that look at a human kid. The human kid when it is born in the human love monkey, you leave it in the Okay. It cannot do anything. It cannot feed itself. It cannot clean itself. It just defecates. It just, you know, shouts, screams or everything. And the first month, the child doesn't even smile. Okay, nowadays child children have become very smart. Not only are their eyes wide open in the beginning itself, but they even start smiling at you. I've seen recently a 10, 10 day old kid was like happily smiling at me. I said, are you sure he was born on the 2nd of December? Okay. So this is <laughs> so kids can be like that, you know. They can be very, very uh, uh, initially when they're born, they are very helpless. And according to this fellow, according to Alfred Adler, the child is knows that the child is born. A human child is inferior. Okay. So when the child is born with inferiority com complex, all that the child does is just work hard towards gaining its superiority and establishing that it is good enough. Okay. So how does it go about? There are three aspects of uh, inferiority that a person goes through. Some people, uh, some children are born very weak. Okay. They're born with a lisp. They're born with polio. They're born with, or they've been neglected for some reason and all that. So they're born with some kind of an inorganic inferiority. And the child strives when they grow up, they become the opposite. Okay. So Theodore Roosevelt was a very, very uh, weak child, but when he grew up, he was an epitome of fitness. The example that I can think of, you know, in India is the example of uh, my favorite example is that of Rithik Roshan, son of Rakesh Roshan. He was born with a flat foot. He used to lisp. He even had jaundice for four months and doctors declared him nearly dead. In jaundice, he even got typhoid also. The doctor said he's so weak. I don't know. I mean, he even lost some years in school also while getting, you know, while growing up. And he had that extra finger thing jutting out and the parents didn't know. Rakesh Roshanji was not only bald, he was good looking like eyes wise, but he was not confident about his hair, receding hairline. From his first film to the last film that he's done, he's got a wig on. Maybe the last few films where he's appeared publicly and all that, he doesn't have the wig on anymore. But those were the days where he was very conscious about his hair, not being there. Okay, In spite of uh, Rekha and everyone supporting him in many movies and uh, supporting him even in his work in Krish. Okay, So in spite of that today, in spite of having all these new dancers and all that, Rithik Roshan is really a force to be reckoned with. He's one of the best dancers our industry has seen. Okay, He does so well. He's so strong. The kind of muscles and physical muscles and the strength that he has developed. It was he in his state who brought about the six-pack ab and you know that chiseled Greek body. John Abraham came after him. It was this guy who started the whole thing. Okay. In Kahona Pyare. Okay. So that's how it happened. And then there is this case of spoiled and pampered children. Okay. And these spoiled and pampered children of Kalyani Nagar, Korega Park, and, uh, you know, Aund and uh, the area that you are staying in, Bun Garden Road, and all that, your college. These spoiled brats, you know, in bungalows with nannies and maids and everything around them. When yeah, Aryan Khan, see how he got into trouble. And see how, uh, you know, Shah Rukh Khan did not go out of this way to protect him. Sunil Dutt, and see, uh, sorry, Sunil Dutt's son, that is Sanjay Dutt. I want to tell you about stories of how Suresh sir met Sanjay Dutt in the plane also, didn't even recognize him. Okay. And uh, those were the days when uh, his movie Rocky had just come out and he had already got into drugs and he would already broken up with his uh, first wife and all that. And the second wife was also suffering from cancer and all that. And ultimately, I think she died or something. And then he married this Manita. Okay. 
or it is the other way around i think the first one died and the second one is that uh, one who married the um, uh, tennis player um i you all know better okay so the thing is that some kids are very spoiled and pampered and then they overcompensate they say that and you know when when they are caught and when they go through that problem don't you think that uh, you know sunil dad as a father he became the minister and he did everything to protect his son but didn't he wouldn't he have literally clobbered this fellow wouldn't he have really put him into trouble and his mother nargis ji before passing away don't you think she would have really given him a good one she had seen the film rocky and she must have known it's going to flop like hell and the her son is not going to do well and he's going to get into deep shit and that is the reason why i don't know i mean like you know whatever happened i'm sorry about being a little insensitive and crude about it and yet that spoiled pampered brat today he is one of the you know most popular actors he's done so well he married at such a late age and after having such a grown up kid a daughter who is living abroad and he could not go ab abroad to meet her because he's still under that tada thing and all that now i think he's released and all that all those charges have been uh, you know taken away from him everything is fine now he can travel okay but then he became responsibility responsible he had more kids he has two kids he's got twins and he's very nice to his wife and he's very honest about it and that movie sanju that came out was showing how responsible he's become okay so this could be even the case of say maybe mukesh ambani who got it all ready okay school and everything came as such a shock to him both the you know mukesh ambani ji got into stanford business school because of his father but he could not study he could not handle the pressure of studies of doing an mba from stanford business school he failed and he came back i know about all these things because you know we find out <laughs> we are very what can i say spoiled brat types you know that we did it okay so <laughs> we are not those spoiled and pampered kids but there are many spoiled pampered kids okay any other examples you can think of rajiv gandhi ji as a prime minister spoiled and pampered kid his mother spoiled and pampered kids kind of you know we don't know the real story of indira gandhi ji i do but then in a way you know she had it all written for him okay yusuf ali khan spoiled and pampered kid in spite of being spoiled and pampered kid they have made it on their own also and they've compensated their life and proved it to their fathers and their mothers and the society that they deserve to be spoiled and pampered and they, it's fine to be a tata bella or a, you know ambani kid or even a bachchan or you know a roshan kid and let's see what happens to the khans and uh, the other khans that are about to come okay so let's take it further there is also the neglected child and that's where dhirubhai ambani comes in that's where bill gates comes in that's where steve jobs comes in that's where many other kids come in who have really made it to that level apj was he was not neglected and all that but he didn't have the kind of comfort that you and i have had in our life okay and yet look at what he did the neglected child worked hard strived hard shahrukh khan himself was not that neglected is from modern school and modern college and all that okay karan johar pampered kid look at him now that fact so arjun uh, kapoor pampered kid fat kid sunakshi uh, sinha fat kid look at her now okay so these people have really made it and a neglected child also basically what adler is saying that people out here striving towards perfection they want to you know prove it to themselves that they're not that helpless why why crying kid that was born on their birthday they are now strong okay and they are where they are at this stage let's take a 5 10 minutes break i'm going to just put it on i'm going to stop the sharing i'm going to pause the recording
Any questions about uh, the above two theories? No questions? I presume that you all are enjoying the lecture and you are understanding everything. Okay. So about superiority and inferiority complex, anything else you want to know? Because this is something that you keep hearing about personality. Or you should go to what superiority complex is. There is no such thing as superiority complex. That person is just confident or maybe a slightly more confident than normal. Now you are afraid for that person, that, but that person is not afraid for himself or herself. So let the person be. Let them make their mistakes. Let them fall flat. That will be happening because of the subconscious, uh, oh, sorry, super conscious attacks those persons are getting. Okay. How many times you see on this road, you find a guy who a very on a very fast bike or a fast car with full blast music and you know that fancy thing and you're like, Abhi to ye marega. Marega. How many of you actually heard or seen Marega? Very few. Okay. Even if you give that consciousness, you know, that, that thing, ki ye marega, ye marega, those people are sometimes immune to the super conscious attack. Okay. And yet that super consciousness is that hub, you know, that you join in. If you want to download information, you just connect to that. And you'll get the information when your mind is in complete silence, when you attain that deep meditation. Okay. And that all happens as we go along. Okay. There was this guy called Jean, Jean Piaget also. And he was the one who experimented on his four children. Or was it three children? He had three children, sorry. He had two daughters and a son. And he came up with these uh, developmental stages that is the sensory motor stage. Again, the time when the child is like, you know, in that uh, crawling stage and walking stage where everything is related to the mouth and everything and the child is trying to get their uh, thing happening. Then comes the pre-operational stage where the child start ex starts exploring more, starts walking around. And this is the time when the child goes through, you know, when you, when you close your eyes and you do boop, beep, you know, or hiya. That's the time when the child laughs a lot. How I? Because when you close your eyes and you, when you go behind the door, the child actually cannot see you. And when you come out and you do, you know, the child actually feels very thrilled to see you all over again. And you notice that as the child grows up after a few years, that whole, you know, doing that huya uh, thing and all that goes for a toss. Because that's when the child has started coming into what is called the concrete operational stage. And the surprise, the child knows you're behind there. So when you're very small and or, you know, when you take your parents for surprise and you do, Hoo! you open the door and Hoo! you know, they get a little scared. But then once you do it three, four times, they know that you want to do it. The next time you open the door, they are the ones who scare you by doing who or they'll just say, hey, you know, and go with that man. There's a movie called man. Okay. About this emoji called man who could not just remain man. Okay. So, and then comes the formal operational stage when they grow up to become responsible adults and they learn from everyone. So Piaget was like, you know, Jean Piaget was a very uh, pioneer in all this and he used his children as the ones he used, uh, you know, the method of experimental, in experimental psychology, he used a method of observation, okay? Now let's look at this particular one. This is a very interesting theory and I wanted to skip it actually today and just focus on uh, the last two theories, but I'll still take out a little time and quickly run through this and we'll go into more details and some more photographs and everything and uh, get you all to understand the importance of the dog and the rat, okay? Rat and pigeon for B.F. Skinner operant conditioning and the dog for Ivan Pavlov and the classical conditioning. I'm sure some of you have heard about him but uh, those who have not, and uh, most of you may not have, let me tell you how it all started. This behavioristic theory by J.B. Watson, and we saw his uh, definition also, a sum total of the ways the way people behave with uh, each other is what J.P. Watson said was the definition of personality. Okay, So he said very clearly that give me a dozen of healthy infants, you know, people from well-named, well-formed, and he said, give me the independence, the autonomy to do whatever I want with them. 
and I'll guarantee to take any one of them at random, okay? Pick them up and train them to become whatever you want me to train them, irrespective of their background. He did not believe in the heredity factors. He didn't believe that predisposition towards a profession comes because of heredity factors. He said predisposition happens because of the way we nurture the child based on the environment we create for the child. And we can train a, and change a person's personality. That is what he said. And he did not say that he just opposed Sigmund Freud's way. And he did not even care for Sigmund Freud's way. He didn't even mention Freud and the others. But he did mention that all those people like... Um, Friedrich Froswith and not Friedrich Froswith. What was the guy guys? Friedrich Taylor, sorry, Friedrich. I was thinking of uh, uh, anyway. So Friedrich Taylor, the one who said right at the beginning, he said that it's eighty percent. And Francis Galton, another guy, who also said that eighty percent of a person's personality is based on the heredity factors. It's only you know twenty percent that the environment matters, and yet. J.B. Watson and the others said that, no, it's the other way around. 80% of a person, what the person is, is based on the environmental factors. Okay, So I might you know, select a do lawyer, doctor, merchant chief, and yes, even a beggar man and thief. Regardless of his talents, pensions, tendencies, abilities, vocations, race, or anything regarding his ancestors. And he said it in 1930. The famous movie, My Fair Lady, is based on what this guy said. And that's where Professor Higgins over there, he comes forward and he says that he picks up a girl from the street and he gives her a nice warm house and he teaches her English. He puts her into a language lab and with his friend, after three to six months, something of like that is the period where he trains her to become a lady. And he introduces her to uh, the queen and Prince Charles himself. And it's a very old movie. It's a very popular movie. The actors, I don't know. I don't think any of them are alive even right now. And this is one of my favorite movies. So just do a little research on it. My Fair Lady. Okay. And it's not F-A-R-E. It's F-A-I-R. Fair means gori gori. Okay. So this is what they talked about conditioning. Okay. And they said that anything that is repeated and re-repeated, it becomes a pattern in a person's life and the person keeps on learning it and learns to behave in a particular way. And that's how, you know, we are nothing but a product of being conditioned. So we are individuals who are completely conditioned to be what we are. Okay. So the first behaviorist uh, theory that I'm going to be talking about with the dog is Ivan Pablo. He's not even a psychologist. He's not even a behaviorist. He's basically an endocrinologist. And he was a Russian philosopher, physiologist and endocrinologist who used to be measuring and you know, testing about the saliva and the digestive system of uh, within humans. And so he could not experiment on humans. So he had a dog. Okay, So he had attached some machines at the dog's saliva glands, which are here. These you know, these things that you feel over here in your neck, these are the ones that produce these two pouches over here. These are the ones that produce, see if you press it also, it actually hurts a little. <coughs> so this is what is the, where the saliva, uh, salivary gland is. And he had put some tubes in. And then he went about, you know, that he had made an experimental chamber where the dog was inside it in a very com comfortable environment. And all the tubes were attached to him and his sensor, sensories and everything. And this guy was measuring. So what he would do is that they would be placing some food in the dog's mouth. And the amount of saliva that came out, depending on the type of food and the interval, the amount of food and uh, the taste of the food and everything was put in, they were just measuring all that. Now, he had a huge house. So every time what used to happen is that uh, just before the food used to be served, there used to be a caretaker whose footstep, talk, 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 would be coming. And then there would be the main chef, you know, who would be ringing the bell for the rest of the family, that the food is on the table now. So please, it is being served. Okay. So initially, when the bell rang, nothing happened to the dog. Okay. So this is what it is. 
okay this is the chamber over here this is ivan pavlov himself and these are all the other people when he got the nobel uh, prize for it and this was a, the cute little dog who was experiment upon experimented upon okay so initially when the food was placed in the dog's mouth and the salivation happened that was an unconditional stimulus leading to an unconditioned response then what happened was that initially when the bell was ringing the dog was not salivating at all so it was a neutral stimulus leading to no you know no conditioned response nothing was happening this was happening before conditioning okay here you can see this was happening before the where is it here this was happening before the conditioning then during the conditioning when the process of conditioning was going on what was happening is the bell rang the food was placed in the dog's mouth the salivation happened the next time what happened the bell rang and the food came and the dog salivated the bell rang the food came and the dog salivated the bell rang the food came and the dog salivated now what happened after the conditioning the bell rang the food did not come and the dog started salivating in anticipation and that's how the dog learned that the moment the bell rings food is about to come so this is what is called the classical conditioning okay where your conditioned response comes out with just a condition stimulus which has got nothing to do with the conditioned response that is salivation has got nothing to do with the bell now why would the bell ring and you feel like you know salivating it doesn't matter for you bell rings and then the class starts or the period changes or the last bell that rings gives you happiness and joy because you know you're going home or the bell before the lunch break when the fourth bell rings you know that now there's no fifth period okay now it is recess time it's the time to have tiffin okay so this is what is called classical conditioning and in this what happened was that there were also times when you know the bell did not work so the bell stopped uh, uh, ringing but then it also happened that he noticed all this and what he did was that he rang the bell but he did not give the food okay he rang the bell did not give the food rang the bell the dog anticipated you know food to come but the food did not come so the salivation also reduced and ultimately stopped okay so day 1 this happened day 2 this happened day 3 it happened day 4 the bell rang and the dog did not salivate but the food was given okay now the good dog again got ex excited so on day 5 when the bell rang the dog again salivated the same amount that he used to salivate before okay because that is called spontaneous recovery where you realize now in a real example you know real life example i'll give you is that you go home from work tired and you know that your mother has cooked very nice dal chawal okay so you go in and you get the fragrance of dal chawal and you know it's very it's cooked by your mom so you salivate and therefore you know you have and you eat your dal chawal you enjoy it so this happens daily 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 then one day you don't even come to know the mother could not reach you by the phone okay and your mother had to go to the village because something happened to her mother and she didn't she just left a note for you but the maid or the neighbor made the dal chawal because the mother knew she has to keep looking after you so she told the maid or she told the neighbor to make it so when you came home you smelled the dal chawal but when you ate it you did not enjoy it so it wasn't tasty okay so the next day you come back home and you get the smell of dal chawal and you do you salivate less because you know it's not made by a mother when you taste it it is not made by a mother so you salivate less and you just eat as much as you feel like just to take care of your hunger the third day you come home you smell the dal chawal you don't even salivate you just eat for the sake of eating and you add a little achar okay because you don't like the taste of that dal chawal you add a little dahi also even at night and you say let me make it a little more tasty you add a little sabzi you maybe get a burger from outside okay from swiggy or from zomato or whatever it is the fourth day you come in and then you know you again smell the dal chawal and this time you don't salivate till mother appears 
and she serves with dal chawal and you look at her in anticipation you made it mama and she says yes baby just for you and you don't even ask her when you were back and all that you start salivating and you enjoy the dal chawal you getting the point that is called classical conditioning that there are many many examples of spontaneous recovery or extinction also that you can the mother just stops coming or the you know like mother stops cooking because she has had a problem and she decides to give away the cooking to the daughter in law or to the neighbor or to the maid and then that's the end of that tasty dal chawal made by mother okay but spontaneous recovery can happen after two months when you beg her to make it and she makes it and it's so amazing that you actually get back the salivation and the smell of the dal chawal made by or the fragrance of the dal chawal made by your mother okay then there can be examples of uh, the voice of the boss okay the car sound of the boss and the boss coming in and you being you know serious about it so like that there are plenty of examples now let's come to what is called the behavioristic theory according to b f skinner and now this is like really interesting all the circus animals are you know uh trained because of this method where by mistake the animal does something right and the reinforcement that is the food okay happens after the the rat or any animal does the right thing okay and operant conditioning is where you are operating upon upon the universe upon the people and you are controlling their behavior so this is based on the reinforcement theory that we spoke about yesterday that is last time and in this what happens is that there is a rat okay now you can see this picture there's a rat and there is a this particular box inside which the rat is is called the skinner box okay so it's named on bf skinner his name that is it's called the skinner box okay so there is a electric grid over here if you notice okay an electric current attached to generate that electric uh, you know that thing uh, shock and then there is a, a food dispensing or pellet dispensing uh, machine over here there's a tube from where from here the food drops over here okay there's a lever over here which accidentally the rat touches and that's when the food comes in and there are some lights and there's a speaker and there's lots of air for the uh, rat to kind of you know be comfortable and there's of course a glass uh, cover here also so the rat is like you know comfortably placed in this box so after some time the rat starts feeling hungry and literally rat ke pet mein khud ke chuhe you know jaane lagte hain wo ghumne lagte hain they are the ones who are jumping around so the rat starts jumping around because wo chuha hai aur chuhe ke ko bhook lag rahi hai chuhe ke pet ke andar chuhe aa gaye hain so therefore he jumps and jumps and jumps and accidentally hits the the lever and the food pellet comes out so he has the food pellet you know he smells it and he has it and then he kind of you know next time he realizes he that that one pellet was not enough for his stomach okay remember the pellet is so small and the stomach is slightly bigger okay so he needs a few more pellets to be satisfied so now this time he jumps around and dances around you know chuhe naach rahe hain but he dances with a little more diffidence and with a lot more awareness and then accidentally again you know he hits the Uh, the lever again a pellet comes the third time he dances but a little bit lot more awareness and this time he realizes that it's the hand touching the lever so he the lever it gets touched and now the pellet comes he eats it and now he looks at the lever and then he starts pressing the lever he presses it once one pellet comes he presses it twice two pellets come then he goes tap 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 and 12th or 15th pellets come he is so excited looking at all the pellets he doesn't want the food but the nature of the rat remember tom and jerry tom to so all right but jerry has to be greedy jerry wants everything stored okay so what does this little jerry in here does this little rat this naughty rat he just goes on cut 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 and creates a horde of it okay and now he's happy ab to ash karenge you know ab to jab raat ko you know tv dekhenge netflix dekhenge we'll have fun watching suryavanshi and uh, matrix and spider man and the whole works and some of the new movies and ab to maza okay so he finished eating so in between all this 
what happens is that this skinner na this r b f skinner is a quite a badmash fellow he starts this electric shock generator now the rat again starts jumping okay and the wood pellets are over and the lever you know he doesn't know what to do he starts jumping again and again he presses the lever and this time the pressing of the lever actually makes sure that for the next 2 minutes there is no electric you know shock coming after 2 minutes again the electric shock starts he again starts jump, jumping and he presses the lever okay and now the next minute after 2 minutes you know he knows it's going to start so even before it starts he just presses the lever but it still starts after 2 minutes exactly so the moment slight current comes tap lever 2 minutes aram no issues okay are you getting it how it is working so he started doing that with the signals with the lights now you will get the uh, food only when you press the red button with your nose now you will get the food only when you press the blue button if you want two pellets blue button if you want one pellet red button if you want you know no electric current then the lever so this is how he started controlling and he had the skinner box he did it these experiments several experiments on pigeons also he made a symphony he made these pigeons actually play piano yeah music he created an orchestra where he was the one running the orchestra and the pigeons were creating music with all this you know with the pellets and all that and that's how the learning theories come in i don't know who this is calling up uh, one second hello okay okay so now let's now look at the next theory that is the humanistic theory we have already spoken about maslow's theory in it so abraham maslow and carl rogers were the two beautiful people who came up with this theory and there were many others also okay and uh, yet let me say that this theory you know focuses on the humanistic perspective that is what you feel what you are it's got nothing to do with the heredity the parents the environment all that matters yes but it's all about the atma the brahman the inside the you the one which is into self realization okay the one which has reached its zenith and gone beyond that the one which is transcended and how does it one go about is what we already discussed about abraham maslow's theory where he said it's the physiological biological needs that are met then comes the safety needs then come the love and the belongingness needs you know a partnership and friendship and all that then comes the esteem needs where you want your uh, uh, kind of you know you want to feel good about it that i have achieved i have done something your goals are met you have actually you know kind of risen up to the value you got degrees etc then you want some cognitive mental stimulation then you want some creative and aesthetic stimulation in your life those needs are also met and finally you are ready to give back to the universe and you feel that you've reached it you've got your own enterprise you've got your own setup and uh, it's only 4% of the world population that reaches that okay and yet our carl rogers is the one who said that it actually starts with you okay it's all about you and as a therapist he said that in my early professional years i was asking the questions how i can treat how i can cure how i can be the vidhata and the god and change the person who's coming to me because he is not comfortable with what he or she is but as i went about meeting more and more people as i realized that it is not about me it's about how they want to help themselves it's how about they who want to live a better life it's about you baby it's not about me and what i think that i am the godhead i am the psychiatrist i am the psychologist i am the one you know with the degrees and with the knowledge of how i can trust you with hypnosis okay or with therapies of other types so the best therapy that carl rogers used was the therapy of giving unconditional positive regard unconditional acceptance okay and this he came up with in his books on becoming a person and one more book also 
and those books are with me right now they're still around and my professor professor ragu sinha wanted these books he didn't have them he couldn't get them in the library also somebody had taken it away and not returned it so he was looking for these books and he said even if i get the photocopy so when i found it i got his number and i called him i said sir give me your address i'm sending the books and he said no romita keep them with your husband they are yours okay you found them because you were so keen on me getting it make a photocopy of it and next time you come to allahabad bring it with you don't send it by post it's you know i can live without it when i have you know and i'll see what i can do also so according to carl rogers who is supposed to be the father of counseling therapy okay so basically the stages of counseling the most important stage of rapport building and of unconditionally accepting the client who is in front of you and developing that core trust within that person comes from carl rogers and his book is on becoming a person okay so what did he say he said all the humans basically work towards not achieving a superiority complex or getting over their inferiority complex they are here to realize their true potential to be able to realize that they have it in them they are the creators or the co-creators of their own destiny they are directly in touch with the divine and with the goodness of heart okay so according to him he said that a human being to be able to realize that atma that brahman that potential the pure potential and to be in complete awareness they need only two things and the first is the need for positive regard that they need that you know love and acceptance that unconditional love it is universal everyone needs it even a dog needs it even a plant needs it even a tree which is stationary needs it they need that unconditional divine love from the universe okay that acceptance that approval and second thing that they really need is a need for positive self regard the self talk the self efficacy okay this is the time remember bandura also another humanistic uh, psychologist came up with this whole concept of self efficacy so when you know yourself when you are an introverted person in terms of you you have an internal locus of control where you know in the bottom of your heart in the bottom of your beingness in that self in the core bit which is so invisible to you that psychic energy that prana shakti that urja that is keeping you alive that makes you live that is what you are and that's all you need a little reminder from outside because there are so many people who are out there who put covers of darkness around you and tell you you are not good enough and then you have to remove that have a bath remove that and say this little shining light of mine i'm going to let it shine let it shine all the time let it shine hide it under a bushel oh no i'm going to let it shine come on sing with me let it shine all the time let it shine take this little light round the world i'm going to let it shine let it shine all the time let it shine okay so those of you who don't like my singing please offer me my money my google pay account is the same as my number okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding okay i used to make a lot of money when i was in college in school, you know because there i was just surrounded by lovely signals and they all used to come and offer me 10 paisa and 1 rupee and you know one of them offered me 10 rupees itna chalega i said kiske liye chup hone ke liye romita chup hone ke liye okay i don't know why my husband's phone is like you know constantly uh, can you just give me a sec tini Please take daddy's phone too many phones are coming this is a third missed call 
Okay. There are some missed calls. Please just check who they are and just call them back and find out. Okay. So according to Carl Rogers, a fully functional person has absolutely an open mind, an open heart. Okay. ये दिल जो है आपका है वो है ना कि जो भी प्यार से मिला हम उसी के हो लिए नॉट पुलिशली बट विथ ओपननेस टू एक्सपीरियंस दिस पर्सन इज इन टू एक्सिस्टेंशियल लिविंग वेर यू वॉन्ट्स टू लिव एवरी डे अ न्यू यू नो सिचुएशन समथिंग टू लुक फॉरवर्ड टू वेक्स अप इन द मॉर्निंग ओके फील्स वेरी वेरी happy this guy or uh, you know this person has got that organismic trusting where they look forward to the zest of life okay you want to laugh and about this word also it's okay but they have that basic trusting where the character competence and confidence is built trust versus mistrust very correct sun 0 to 2 years okay this person just knows that if i am going to be put into a bad situation or into a, a challenging situation i will get help from here from outside from divine from magic from anywhere but help is coming and they somehow muster up the courage and the will to postpone life till help comes okay and help does come to them because they have that trust in that deep trust and they have what is called an experiential freedom where they live according to their dil also and according to what wisdom has taught them okay dil se re dil se and at the same time they use their minds with logic and they step carefully at the same time they know that they have complete freedom to be what they want to be and to be in a life full of creativity and come up with new things and a mal adjusted person is a person not open to new experiences lives according to certain rules and regulations which may not be comfortable this person is dependent on substances on people on situations on organizations to give him or her salary to survive this person doubts it disregards the feelings and emotions of those around him he says mera duty hour khatam ho gaya main ja raha hu i am going i don't care if we live or die my family is more important my me time is important khatam gayi baat mera samay pura ho gaya out okay the watch is not here the watch is here okay so this person feels manipulated This person says, मैं क्यों सेवा करूं जब मुझे क्या दिया है दुनिया ने गवर्नमेंट ने मेरे लिए क्या किया है मोदी जी ने क्या मुझे क्या दिया मैं क्यों दू उनको वोट ओके मैं इनको क्यों इज्जत दू तुम होते कौन हो तुम अगर मुझसे ये काम करा रहे हो जस्ट बिकॉज यू नो यू नीड इट यू थिंक आई एम डिपेंडेंट ऑन यू वो लिव विदाउट सर्वेंट एंड आई सी आफ्टर फाइव डेज यू नॉट बी एबल टू क्लीन योर ओन टॉयलेट वे यू डेफिकेट that kind of an attitude are maladjusted people those with that feeling of no i am here to do seva i am here to have fun i am here to serve you these people grow okay and these people are this maladjusted people are very common they are aam aadmi they are conforming okay they are the first ones to run and leave the ship when there is a problem they are the first persons to escape or they are the first persons persons to pick up the kulari and fight for no reason at all okay the first persons to create that shinding wherever they go and according to carl rogers the three very special qualities a manager or a very highly effective person should have is congruence what that person thinks what that person says and what the person feels and does everything should be in synchronicity the integrity and the honesty okay the genuineness and honesty the integrity is you know what you think you are speaking that and honesty is you know what you are speaking you are doing or the other way around okay now suresh sir used to give this example a lot and i took him for granted hearing this from him so often 
but that congruence where you are completely balanced, where you are upright, left brain, right brain, what do you think you say? Where you don't need that me time. Why do you need the me time? You keep questioning yourself. What do you do? You will get bored. Nowadays, children are so clear about what they are. They don't need the me time. They need the we time. Have fun with the others. If they don't get we time, they and their computer, they are the we. Okay. So then there's this empathy again. See, empathy is also coming up here again. So empathy in itself is something which is very important for your personality de development. Okay. The ability to feel what the other person is feeling and the respect. Don't say you're not important. It simply isn't true. The fact that you're born is proof that God has a plan for you. The path may seem unclear right now, but one day you will see that all that came before was truly meant to be. And remember one thing, God writes only bestsellers, so be proud of who you are. Because your character in the book of your life is important because you are the star. So stop and think. Okay? And act with respect because you are the star. Stop, think, act with respect. All the time, don't keep running. Don't keep rushing. Sometimes just go thamba. And respect for yourself first and for the world around you. And with that, Remember only one thing. You as a human being are the most special. Your parents came together and they produced a third life. And that third life is you. You are the one and only. You are a truly special human being. So in the entire population of millions and gazillions and trillions and you know zillions of insects and trees and uh, you know humans and everything life you are the only one you are the one so find your own self integrate with yourself and just go out there and perform okay plan practice prepare and perform, okay? Plan, prepare, practice and perform, okay? And that's all. Thank you. Have a nice day, all of you. See you tomorrow and uh, with another new lecture on this. Um... So did you enjoy today's lecture? Did you learn something new? Did you have fun? So thank you. All the best. Those of you who are in a hurry, please, uh, you can sign off. Okay, without your thank yous, the rest of you can start saying thank yous. And uh, all of you, uh, one day I want to see your faces, huh? all of you. And uh, kind of, you know, take a, a screenshot because I need it officially to give it to man. Okay, for morning batch, I've taken one screenshot. With you all, I just need one more shot. Okay, so have a very nice, happy new year. All of you, take care. Okay, please change your name to your full name because then there'll be problems with attendance. So have a nice evening. God bless you. Bye-bye. I'm missing Amod. Where is Amod today? Why Amod has not come? Chalo, ask him. Okay, in the group also I'll find out. Take care.